Hi everybody, Joe Price here. In today's video, I'm going to be uh, explaining to you how you can build your own teleporter hub. If you have a uh, fairly large world, if you have a lot of um, uh, things built in a large world, or you just want to make connections to the various uh, biomes, you might want to consider uh, creating a teleport hub that will uh, connect to all those uh, destinations. Now, um, if you only have like five, six destinations, it's pretty much uh, uh, sufficient to just have five, six teleporters. But if you have 15, 20, maybe more destinations, you might want to consider using a teleport hub similar to the one that uh, I've constructed in my own Ultimate World. So um, if you've watched my previous videos, you probably have uh, seen me um, using this uh, particular hub to reach the various uh, builds, the various uh, destinations. And just a quick explanation of how this uh, hub uh, functions before we take a look at how you can uh, construct one yourself. So um, uh, this teleport hub uses a single teleporter to connect to all possible uh, destinations. To uh, travel to a particular um, uh, location, we need to uh, input an alphanumeric key. So we have to input either A, B, or C, and then a number between um, uh, one and uh, zero, one and nine, and uh, zero is the other red digit. And we also have a, uh, a lookup directory here. So for instance, if we bring up uh, the first directory, all the um, um, locations that start with A, you can see here that I have uh, six locations, A1 through uh, A6. So if I wanna, for instance, reach the uh, moon auto farm, I'll just need to input uh, A1 into the, um, into the keypads and then stand on a teleporter and I'll be teleported to the, uh, the moon auto farm. Now let's take a quick look. So A1. And there we go, I've arrived at the uh, Moon Auto Farm. All right, so this will send me back. Let's do another example. So let's pull up another directory. This is uh, all the B locations. So here we have listings B1 all the way down to uh, B0. So for instance, if I want to uh, head to um, the Castle Gallery B5, I'll just input B5 here, stand on the teleporter, and there I am, I'm at the uh, castle uh, gallery. All right, so let's head back. So you can see that uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, teleporters here blinking on and off to my uh, right. What essentially is happening is when I'm teleporting to the desired location, it's actually sending me through um, this uh, system of uh, hoiks and I uh, end up uh, getting directed to the appropriate uh, teleporter that then, that then uh, teleports me to my, uh, to my desired location. All right, so it's a bit hard to see what's going on here. And as you can see by the wiring, it's uh, fairly complicated. So let's head over to a uh, tutorial world. We'll take a look at exactly how this is put together. And I'll show you how to build an even better, more efficient uh, teleport hub. Um, I didn't include the more efficient one here. I'm fine with how this is, but if you intend to build one yourself, you might want to consider using the more efficient one that I've constructed. All right, so uh, let's head to the uh, tutorial world. As before, I'll make this available for download so you can play around with the, uh, um, the builds in the tutorial world first, see how you like it, um, see how it operates, and then uh, you can build one uh, for yourself or on your own world. All right, in any case, uh, this is the more efficient um, uh, teleport hub, but let me first explain the teleport hub that uh, I use on my own world. So it's uh, fairly big, but um, not too difficult to uh, construct once it's clear how this is uh, all uh, put together. So um, you can see on the uh, right here that there's a system of uh, crisscrossing uh, tracks, uh, but as far as uh, where we start off with, when we stand on this teleporter and pull the uh, switch, just bring up the wiring here, um, if you follow the uh, green wire, it's going to teleport us to the starting teleporter right at the very bottom here. And uh, without inputting any uh, anything into the um, alpha numeric display here, uh, we'll simply get uh, hoiked all the way at the very bottom here to the far right, get hoiked upwards. And it's just a bit off screen, but we'll also get to hoiked to the left into a teleporter right at the very top. In fact, uh, let's bring that up here. Yeah, so we got teleported um, uh, right from this teleporter right up top. Brings us right back to our starting uh, teleporter. Yeah, so let's see that. Yeah, there we go. Now, um, inputting either A, B, or C 
that will actually actuate um, uh, Hoyt teeth at all of these uh, junctions. For instance, if I pull C, notice how the uh, tooth got actuated at the very first junction point, meaning when I get teleported into this uh, system, I'll get immediately hoiked upwards. And when I get hoiked upwards, I'll immediately also pass over this uh, pressure plate, which feeds back onto the hoik tooth, thus um, shutting off that um, um, shutting off the C that I've just uh, inputted. Now, if I don't input a number, all that's going to happen is I'll just get hoiked straight up. And again, just teleport or yeah, teleport up here. I'll get hoiked uh, straight up and back into that uh, teleporter uh, up top. So nothing's going to happen. I'll just pass straight through. Let's demonstrate that. Yeah, there you go. So if I input B, for instance, that'll actually a hoik tooth at the next junction point, and I'll be hoiked upwards there. And if I uh, input A, then it's the final hoik tooth that'll be actuated. And again, I'll be hoiked upwards up that particular wrap path. So now, if I actually want to um, end up in any one of these uh, teleporters, I'm going to have to uh, input some number um, uh, uh, between that uh, 1 and uh, 0 here. So for instance, uh, if I were to input 4, okay, what ends up happening is in this particular uh, row, I've just um, flip-flopped some of these uh, hoik uh, teeth and created uh, ceilings uh, directly above. Meaning, if I'm going to, let's say, input A4, then right at the very bottom, I'll be hoiked uh, upwards until I hit this uh, ceiling. When I hit that ceiling, I'll be hoiked directly to the right into that uh, waiting uh, teleporter. Now, that particular teleporter is actually hooked up through a different color wire to a, uh, a teleporter here on the far right, and I'll be teleported to that particular destination. Now, I will note that um, um, when I turn on 4 here, it actually... Um, um, flip-flops things in each one of these uh, columns uh, but of course uh, it's only um, over on the far right here that's um, the relevant uh, flip-flop of Hoi teeth because that's the uh, path that I'll be uh, taking. Now um, uh, this green wire it's also hooked up to the uh, pressure plate which will feed back onto these uh, Hoi teeth and it'll flip-flop them back to their starting positions and turn off this uh, four. I basically want to after inputting the alphanumeric key, I want that to be shut off when I teleport to my particular destination. Yeah, so let's see this in action. Yeah, so there we go. So through that blue wire, uh, I got uh, sent to this particular uh, teleporter. Now, when I teleport back, I'll arrive at that uh, teleporter in the hub, and that'll be immediately hoiked to the right, and then upwards, and then to the left to that waiting uh, teleporter again. Yeah, so there we go. Yeah, so that's essentially how this entire teleport uh, hub uh, functions and how it can be built. So we'll be uh, providing a link in the description box to a, um, a written guide with uh, pictures of this uh, particular uh, teleport hub with wiring as well. And that way, if you can, if you want to build uh, this larger version for yourself, all you have to do is just uh, follow the uh, uh, the pics that will be uh, presented in that guide. If you want to build something a little bit more compact, something that's far easier to build, let's take a look at the teleport hub over here. Okay, same idea. I've got uh, uh, ten, <coughs> uh, 10 digits here. I've got um, uh, letters A, B, and C. So again, I have uh, potentially 30 uh, destinations with this particular uh, teleport hub. And um, uh, the key difference here is that instead of using crisscrossing um, um, uh, hoik tracks, I will use single hoik tracks here. And these single hoik tracks, along the way, they have pairs of um, uh, hoik teeth that, in a given state, will uh, dictate uh, whether or not um, a given pressure plate uh, immediately to the left of that pair of hoik teeth will be uh, triggered or not. Uh, just for instance, if you take a look at uh, this pair of hoik teeth, the top hoik tooth is in a deactuated state the um, um, bottom hoik tooth directly below is in the actuated state and this is hooked up by wire uh, green wire here and it also is connected to this uh, uh, pressure plate on the immediate left so the idea is that when the top hoik tooth is in the foreground 
that means that the pressure plates uh, two tiles uh, to the left will not be uh, activated. Uh, so currently, if you look at all of the uh, pairs of white teeth here, uh, in all of the cases, we have the uh, top white tooth in the foreground. So none of these uh, pressure plates are actually going to be activated. Um, if I want to send the, um, uh, my player character to one of these um, uh, teleporters, I will have to uh, flip-flop this uh, pair of uh, white teeth. So, uh, for instance, if I pull the uh, one lever, notice how just directly above me to the far left, all of those uh, white teeth uh, got uh, flip-flopped. As we can see by a uh, green wire here, it passes through all of those uh, white teeth uh, pairs. Okay, just to show another example, if I pull the uh, two lever, well, um, in the uh, column um, uh, one over, we have once again a flip-flopping of all of those uh, particular uh, white teeth. So bottom line is, the um, the number that is inputted, it basically uh, uh, will um, allow the player to um, activate the uh, the pressure plate that's sitting directly above the teleporter that we wish to uh, enter. Now there's um, three rows here. Which row we end up with is controlled by uh, the input um, <clears throat> A, B, or C. So let's just take a quick look at the wiring here. So for instance, uh, A, if we uh, switch that on, we will end up uh, being teleported in this short uh, track here. We'll end up getting teleported from this particular teleporter to the bottommost uh, track. If we uh, turn on B instead, well, in this uh, short track, it'll be this particular teleporter that will get activated and that's connected to the teleporter in the uh, middle track, so on and so forth. Yeah, so that way this short little track is the one that's going to dictate which of these two, um, uh, or which of the three rows we will end up in. Uh, now, I have uh, just a few um, a teleporter destinations here. If you look at the very top, there's some blue wires connected to a couple of the uh, teleporters and uh, red wire connected to a teleporter in the uh, middle row. So um, if I were to look up uh, my directory, so for instance, directory B, we'll note that there's already some destination. I just label it destination three. Uh, so if I enter B7, I'll proceed to that particular destination. Uh, so uh, the B corresponds to the, uh, uh, the middle uh, row and that teleporter that's hooked up through uh, red wire that is teleporter seven. When I pull seven here, it'll be the teleporter that uh, my player character will end up in. Yeah, so let's uh, demonstrate that if B7. Yeah, so there we go. We ended up in that teleporter that was hooked up by uh, red wire. If I teleport back, it's just gonna send me to that, uh, that middle row again. I'll go all the way to the end, hit the uh, uh, pressure plate on top of the teleporter at the far left and that'll just teleport me back to my starting uh, teleporter in the teleporter hub. Yeah, so there we go. And again, just to show the wiring, these teleporters right at the end of each of these um, quick tracks, it's connected by wire to that starting uh, teleporter. If you're wondering why is this so convoluted, this uh, particular right wire, I just need to make sure that, um, um, that this length of wire is longer reaching the uh, starting teleporter than the length of wire that connects us to the leftmost teleporter in this bottom track. Um, uh, I mentioned in a previous video that when it comes to uh, hooking up multiple teleporters using the same wire, if uh, you teleport from one teleporter, it always sends you to the, um, the, f uh, the furthest teleporter and by furthest, we mean furthest in terms of uh, wire length, wire distance. All right, so that means that all these uh, teleporters on the uh, far left here in these uh, three tracks and the teleporter at the very bottom here on the far left, um, if we step into any one of those teleporters, we'll end up at the starting teleporter in our uh, hub. Yeah, so there we have it. Just uh, give uh, another example here, let's say, um, look up the directory here, a couple of entries C4, C5, uh, leading, leading to a couple of uh, destinations. So for instance, if I enter C4, okay, so that means when I'm going to be teleported into the uh, track at the very bottom, 
I will end up getting teleported from this particular teleporter and that's connected through this uh, green wire to the very uh, top track. I'll end up passing through that track and you can see at the very top here this uh, pair of uh, hoik teeth has been flip-flopped so the teleporter right to the left uh, is the one that I'm going to uh, end up getting teleported from. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's demonstrate that. Yeah, so there we go. We ended up in that uh, teleporter. Yeah, it's kind of funny when I'm passing through these uh, tracks, it seems like it's a bit of a, uh, a bumpy ride, but so be it. It's still uh, uh, pretty convenient, pretty quick. And um, uh, there's one particular uh, advantage, uh, aside from the compactness, one particular advantage of using this approach than the approach I uh, presented initially and the one that I have on my world. Um, sometimes um, there's some minor pauses within the game and it is possible to get stuck uh, upon uh, returning from um, uh, some location. It's very, very rare, but it does happen on occasion. It's just uh, an issue with up hoiks and down hoiks as well, although this is just up hoiks here. So this uh, updated teleport hub, it avoids all of those issues because it has absolutely no up, ho up hoiks at all. And therefore, uh, you will not experience any, uh, any issues here. Uh, as far as uh, returning from your red uh, destination back to this teleport hub. Now, uh, just one quick thing to point out here. You'll note that um, all of these tracks uh, are running from, uh, from right to left. Bizarrely, this does not work if you were to do the mirror image for some reason. Um, if this was uh, oriented the other way from uh, left to right, you'd get stuck along the way. So if you're going to build this, just make sure you build it exactly uh, as I've uh, presented in this particular uh, orientation. Now, just one last thing that I wanted to address, and that is um, hooking this all up to external destinations. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, all of the wiring um, is uh, green, just to make sure that uh, there are no issues connecting uh, the um, uh, teleporters in the hub to external uh, teleporters. Uh, but of course, I'm limited to just using uh, blue and green wires uh, to connect those uh, these uh, teleporters in the hub to external teleporters. So uh, you might encounter on occasion issues where you know you need to uh, connect to a uh, a destination, but there are wires in the way, and um, all of a sudden you might have some difficulties connecting your uh, teleporters. So there's a little trick that you can use. Uh, to connect distant teleporters if there are wires along the way. So here, for instance, you know, let's suppose I have a teleporter I've just labeled A here, so let's say that's the teleporter in the hub, and I've got some uh, teleporter B that I want to um, uh, go to, but there are wires uh, in between my two uh, teleporters. So to solve that particular problem and to be able to connect uh, teleporters uh, A and B, we just use this little uh, interchange. So the whole idea, uh, if you just show the wiring, uh, the whole idea here is our blue wire is connected to this uh, starting teleporter and it feeds through both of these teleporters. But as I just mentioned, um, when we uh, teleport from our uh, position A, we will always end up in the teleporter that's furthest by wire. So we're gonna end up in the teleporter just at the bottom here. And we'll enter this, um, this hoik track, we'll be hoiked to the uh, right We'll go into the teleporter there, and again, if we check the wiring, this is just going to send us to um, uh, position B, because this teleporter is further away than the teleporter directly above. Yeah, so that way we can completely bypass all three of these wires. And this is super fast. Uh, if you uh, build such bypasses, you probably won't even be able to tell that you're going through a bypass. Yeah, see, it's almost uh, instantaneous. Now, if I want to return, yeah, it's the same idea. I just pull a lever, just uh, just the way it works um, if there is no bypass. And uh, the wiring here, so once again, it threads through both of these uh, teleporters, but it's the top teleporter that's the most distant teleporter. So when I teleport from B, it's gonna send me to the teleporter at the top here. So again, I'm gonna enter the uh, hoik track. It'll hoik me to the uh, direct left, into the teleporter there. And from that teleporter, again, I will be uh, teleported to the most distant teleporter, and that'll be the one at position A. So if you just demonstrate that, yeah, so there we go. Again, it's virtually instantaneous. It's as if the bypass is not even there. 
So there we have it. Um, you know, you might have to resort to these kinds of uh, bypasses as you add more and more things to your world and uh, you want to uh, connect more things uh, to the teleporters in your teleporter hub. So as I said, I will uh, make the uh, tutorial world available for uh, download, so that way you can check this out for yourself, and I'll provide uh, pictures uh, of um, uh, these uh, particular uh, teleport hubs with wiring as well, so that way if you want to uh, just directly copy it, then it'll make it uh, much easier to build uh, this entire hub. Just building the hub probably takes about half an hour, maybe even less. Um, it's the hammering that might uh, consume a little bit of time, but um, it's pretty uh, straightforward resources. You can use whatever bricks you want, and uh, most of the stuff that you need here can just be uh, bought uh, from the uh, mechanic. And uh, um, it's up to you how you wish to, uh, um, uh, you know, indicate what letters and numbers are to be input. I just use the uh, statues for uh, for convenience. So there it is. That is uh, how you can uh, create a, a teleport hub on your own world. And again, you have a couple of options. You can build this gigantic one that I use on my world, or the much more uh, convenient, compact uh, uh, teleporter hub uh, that um, uh, I uh, created recently. All right, so that's, uh, that's it for now. And um, yeah, check out the uh, description box for the links to the, uh, to the written guide. All right, so that's all for now. We'll see you later.